So you might have heard the term MediaTek thrown around when talking about smartphones, and you also might have heard people bashing phones that use MediaTek processors and saying they're bad. Well, compared to the competition, they kind of are, but it's not all their fault, and here's why. So first of all, who is MediaTek? MediaTek is a Taiwanese company that makes CPUs or SOCs for smartphones, tablets, etc. More importantly, they are what's known as a fabless semiconductor company, which basically means they design their own chips, but they don't make those chips for you. So you got to go find a factory or a foundry to make their chip. They have three main competitors, Qualcomm, the biggest one. They make chips for all the biggest flagships. High Silicon, which is part of Huawei, so they got a big guy behind them. And finally, Samsung's Exynos, obviously, they are part of Samsung. Honorable mentions include Apple, who designs their own chips as well. Nvidia, who are kind of out of the smartphone market at this point. And Intel, who, well, they don't make smartphone stuff anymore. So how come MediaTek's chips are never as good as the big guy? So let's go over them now. Number one, MediaTek did not have an equal start. Take Samsung's Exynos processor line, for example. Their first big chip was in the Samsung Galaxy S1 in 2010. And at the same time, MediaTek also started hitting it big in the Android market. But now, look at where we are. Exynos is on the same playing field as the big guys. They might not be as good as Qualcomm, but they're on the same playing field. And MediaTek is not. MediaTek is trying, but they're failing. Same thing with Huawei's High Silicon. Their first chip was the K3V2 in Huawei's Ascend phone all the way back in 2012. And now again, they are playing with the big boys. All that to say is that when you are part of a big conglomerate, there are a lot of advantages you can pull even if your parent company, Huawei or Samsung, don't directly help you. Which of course they did. They needed good chips for their cell phones. And of course, talking about the big dog, Qualcomm. They were founded way back in the 80s, and they, literally their technology is in cell phone towers around the world. Again, you get my point. MediaTek is, well, the underdog, kind of, like AMD in some respects, and also not in others, which we will talk about later. Number two, anti-competitive behavior from other companies. Actually, you know what? That's false. It's really just one company, Qualcomm. Remember when I said Qualcomm was founded in the 80s and was a huge wireless player? Well, along with that is also the fact that Qualcomm has accumulated a huge amount of patents over the years. In fact, Qualcomm probably has more patents than you do dollars, unless you live in Zimbabwe or something. Okay, I'm exaggerating, but you kind of get my point. Qualcomm has sued everybody from Apple to Samsung to even the Chinese factories that make the components. It got so bad that a couple of big companies, including Samsung, Intel, and the USA, yes, the country, the United States of America, joined together in a lawsuit against Qualcomm. Most of their patents relate to the radio portion of smartphone chip, so the part that does, you know, calls, text, and data, which means that even non-Qualcomm chips like Apple's Bionic or Samsung's Exynos all have a little bit of Qualcomm's technology in there at least, so they have to pay royalties to Qualcomm. You want to hear something worse? So you know that like lawsuit I was talking about? Um, in order to get companies like Samsung and MediaTek to back off from suing them over patents, you know what Qualcomm offered them? Qualcomm offered them a covenant to sue last, which in layman's terms basically means that if I start suing the whole world, you're going to get sued last. So if I start suing all the companies, I'm going to sue Apple first, I'm going to sue Huawei first, I'm going to sue Nvidia, I'm going to sue Intel, blah, 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 blah. And then, once I'm finished suing all of them, then I will sue um, Samsung and MediaTek. I mean, you get my point. Qualcomm is crap. So, Samsung, Huawei, and Apple, these guys have big wallets backing them so they can fight off Qualcomm for a long time. But MediaTek, well, their wallet is a lot smaller, so they have to find alternative routes, which has impacted them negatively in this next topic. Hmm, that's a pretty good segue. Okay, number two. MediaTek's chip design used to suck. It sucks a lot less now, but they still suck, you know, more than Qualcomm, Samsung, Apple. So here's a TLDR summary of their chips. During the dark ages of smartphones, um, aka before 2012, MediaTek chips had one advantage over competitors like Qualcomm and just one, and that was price. 
MediaTek chips like the MTK6513, MTK6515, and the MTK6575, you know, suffered from overheating, very bad battery life, very bad cell reception, very bad, okay, yeah, you get it, very bad performance, everything was very bad. You know what? Just ask any tech reviewer. Here's a project for you. Go ask your favorite tech reviewer who's reviewed some of these older phones. Ask him about MediaTek chips in 2012 and before and see what he says. I guarantee you he will vomit from frustration just talking about it. So why did their chips suck? Okay, you know what? They sucked in two areas. First was they're super slow and number two, they had bad reception. And let's talk about the bad reception first because that's actually really simple. It's because Qualcomm has basically all the patents for radio technology, which means that MediaTek basically had to develop a lot of their own radio technology. And because they are relatively new to the smartphone space, they didn't have a lot of time. So as a result, these smartphone chips are not very good. They suck, they lose connection, GPS is super inaccurate, etc. It's better now, but back in 2012, wow, it was so bad. Okay, the second area they sucked in is that they were slow. And it is a little bit more complicated than just saying MediaTek chips were slow. The simplest explanation I can think of is this. MediaTek chips are really bad with single core performance, but okay in multi-core performance. Now, most Android apps, even back in the day, in the dark ages, were designed to work well with more than one core, so multi-cores. Even Android works well with more than one core. However, you know what is one thing that does not work very well with more than one core? That is the user interface, aka when you swipe around your phone. Because if you want a smooth UI experience, you need powerful single thread chips with a nice graphics chip to move the UI along smoothly. And MediaTek usually puts in less powerful graphics chips and their single core performance was really never that great. Again, this whole slow UI thing was back in the day. It's mostly fine now. For example, the Redmi Note 8, which has two options, the Helio G90 and the Snapdragon 665. With that, all that being said, I do know for a fact that the Helio G90 will on very rare occasions stutter here and there more than the Snapdragon version. And it will also overheat a little faster than the Snapdragon when you're talking about gaming. So although MediaTek has caught up quite a bit, they haven't caught up completely. Moving on to number three, let's talk about MediaTek's support. They never release kernel sources, which means worse software support and zero chance for custom ROMs, which means really the only person updating kernel sources is MediaTek themselves. And they usually keep it updated for around two years, which is industry standard, which honestly I think should be like way longer than that. However, MediaTek have been known to drop support after just one year, which does happen way more than Qualcomm or Samsung. Hopefully this video helped you gain a little more insight into MediaTek. And again, while MediaTek will probably never be able to compete with Qualcomm in the high-end chip market, they sure can give Qualcomm a run for their money in the mid-range market. And more competition is always better for the consumer. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and sub, and I'll see you guys in the next one.